Wow. 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 This could be the best boats I've found on the East Coast. Slipper mode, battle mode. Slipper mode, battle mode. Zongzi, zongzi, we love the zongzi. Why is Peach Farm so famous? You guys go Google. He said, go Google it, man. Stop asking those silly questions. Since the first Boston Chinatown video a year ago, I realized it's one of my favorite Chinatowns. And trust me, I've been to a lot. So this time, we're leaving no stone unturned, from dropping big money on some Boston lobster, to $5 on a combo box from Ding Ho, to even rocking the opposing team's sports gear. Aw oh yeah, we're going hard in Bean Town. So hit that like button, and let's go. Guys, starting off this video, we gotta begin with one of the most iconic spots in Boston's Chinatown here on Oxford Street, Taiwan Cafe. It's packed for lunch. You can get it at 2 a.m. This is the first spot people brought us to when we visited Boston for the first time like six years ago. Let's go check it out. And I gotta give a shout out to the healthiest, best tasting plant-based instant ramen in the game and the sponsor of this video, Emmy. One of the reasons why I actually don't eat a lot of instant ramens right now is because it's just not good for you. It's actually bad for you. They're usually fried, lots of factory ingredients, ridiculous amounts of sodium, but Emmy is way different. It's actually healthy for you. It's low carb with reasonable sodium. You need some for taste, let's be honest. And here's when it gets crazy. 21 grams of protein and 18 grams of fiber in each of these packets. Your oatmeal doesn't even give you that. That's like a protein shake, but it tastes like ramen. It's like protein ramen. And it's really great for those people who wanna get their protein in, but don't wanna compromise on taste. Ooh, got that Tom Yum kick. I think the broth is one of the best things about this. And I can't believe they really don't use real shrimp, real beef, or real chicken. The Tom Yum had kick. The black garlic chicken was nice and aromatic and the spicy beef plus the egg, I mean, that was really, really good even though it wasn't vegan when I did that, obviously. So these are premium flavors for any instant noodle and they're all done in seven minutes. So go to emmyeats.com slash fungros or use the fungros code to get $5 off of your first order. There are no animal products whatsoever, so vegans out there, you can really enjoy this. Emmy is also proud to offer a 100% happiness guarantee so you can try Emmy risk-free and decide for yourself if Emmy is worth it. If you're not happy with your Emmy, they will offer you a full refund within 30 days of purchase. That is crazy. What other ramen company is actually going to do that? All right, we got some of the most classic dishes here at Taiwan Cafe. Here you have your pai gu fan, AKA your fried pork chop over rice with minced pork sauce, preserved veggies on the side, very Taiwanese. And then here, of course, you have the world famous Shaolong Bao. Um, of course, it come, Shaolong Bao's uh, originally come from the Jiangsu region, but you know, it's, shit, it's right across the water from Taiwan. So, you know, they do a good version here. And then here you have the beef roll, AKA the neuro jembing. And what I notice about the the scallion pancakes in Boston is that they're extra thick and fluffy. And that might be more of a Southern style or possibly Americanized style, but it's definitely not that thin, crispy, kind of like tortilla-like texture, you know, that you might get at other spots. Here we have one of their most famous dishes, which is the Shaolong Bao, AKA the soup dumpling. A lot of sesame oil flavor, a lot of soy sauce in that. That is definitely one of the nuttier Shalom Bao's I've ever had. Here we have the Neuro Dramping, AKA the beef roll with a very thick and fluffy um, bing here. And you know, the Dramping actually originally comes from Shandong. And so they were eating something like this similarly, um, but they didn't have the beef inside. So whether it's an American tradition or, or something that started you know, in modern China, they started putting beef in it and now it's super popular. That is so thick. It's starting to feel more like a bun mi. The pai gu fan, this is a classic Taiwanese dish and really only served at Taiwanese restaurants. Um, what I like about Taiwanese lunch food is that it has a good balance between veggies, rice, and your meat, and it's really unoffensive. The flavors aren't anything crazy. I think there's a lot of five spice, some soy sauce, you know, similar flavors. You got a little preserved veggies here. I think dishes like this are a great gateway to other flavors, and that's why you see so many Westerners here right now, because it's super unoffensive. Um, there's actually not even that much flavor. It's just lightly salted and seasoned, you know? And that's what's really cool about this Taiwanese kind of like bento lunchbox food. All right, our next spot is called Jean's Flatbread. Guys, it has been around for seven years. The Chinese name is Lao Xi'an, literally meaning just old Xi'an. So it's a very simple name, but very critically acclaimed. People love it. It's kind of like the Chinese spot outside of Chinatown. 
and is serving authentic Xi'an food. Let's go. You guys know it's good. It's cash only. Uh, even that Alton Brown, the chef, he, he says that this is his favorite spot in all of Boston right now. All right, guys, we got Jean's flatbread meal right here, all for $30. This was $6. This is the Roja Moore. Oh my gosh, look at this. It's falling apart. It's got plenty of onions. This is the lamb one. Let me just split this open for you. I like how the flatbread is on top. Oh my gosh. Yo, right off the bat, this flatbread is looking like top tier. Let's go in. Jean's flatbread in Boston, Chinatown Cheap Eats. That onion and lamb mixture is fire right now. We got the classic pork roja more. Just a reminder to anybody out there who's serving Xi'an food, put some onions in your roja more. I would very much appreciate that. So this is actually a plain one. Has a little bit of onions, but mostly the minced pork. Let's go in. It's dripping on my hand. It's hot, it's hot, it's hot. Here we got the lamb with hand pulled noodle soup, guys. This was only $8.50. You know what I gotta do. Dip my roja more in my soup. You have a little spicy uh, bamboos on top. Big pieces of lamb. Nice little wood ear fungus. Let's get it. Mm -hmm. Last but not least, you got the yang ro char, aka the lamb skewer. Very big, juicy, and tender. Great lamb flavor. Not the most fatty meat, but it's still tender. That's important. For $1.25, this is bringing the quality and the flavor. Yeah, what do you want people to know about Xi'an food and why is it good? Uh, traditional food, but I think people should try more. Yeah. Do you think it has the most flavor of the Chinese food? Yes. When it comes to getting seafood in Boston's Chinatown, people cannot stop talking to me about Peach Farm. I gotta go inside now, guys. Seafood can still get pretty pricey, even though it's Boston and the waters are cold and the seafood is good. I'm only gonna get a little bit, but we gotta try it out because, man, I'm not passing up another chance to try peach farm. The lobster is $60 and the scallops are $8 each, so you know it's gonna be good. Okay, so this is the kitchen of Peach Farm. Why is Peach Farm so famous? Everybody tells me about their seafood. You guys go Google. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> he told me to, he said, go Google it, man. Stop asking those silly questions. All right, guys, we're here at Peach Farm. Everybody's raving about the seafood. I'm here in a windowless basement. It does kind of remind me of New York's Chinatown. Here, I have a pile of lobster. This is a three pounder. This costed us about $60. And here you have two big old scallops. Each scallop was $8 each. All right, everybody, this is the ginger scallion Boston lobster. This Boston lobster is juicy, it's plump. I can tell it's from the cold waters. $60 is steep. I wish it came with some noodles. That would have been nice, but hey, Peach Farm, they don't mess around with the quality. Right here, you got your garlic uh, scallop right here with vermicelli on top. I gotta cut it off the bottom with this knife right here. Yo, when it comes to the scallops, it definitely 100% lives up to the hype. I think the lobster does a pretty good job, but I might even say the deal is right here in the scallop. Peach Farm! Guys, I think a lot of Chinatowns in 2022 no longer go by convention, but I do think that Boston's Chinatown is very traditional and you can find amazing foods in very unassuming spots like this. And that is a Chinatown classic. All right, you guys, we're at Hing Shing Bakery. This spot has been virtually unchanged for many decades. Still classic, still loved by the community. Let's check it out. Look at that heat. Okay, you have a bao. You have a bao. You have a Hing Shing, $1.50 a bao. The baos are gigantic. Of course, guys, I had to lead off with the spam and egg joint. Um, normally, when you see this out, you will see it with uh, ham and egg, but this is spam and egg. This is a preserved duck egg pastry. I rarely ever see this. I rarely ever get it. It's called Pei Dan So. Let me tell you this, guys. That is an ancient flavor. Hey, being in Boston, you know I gotta try the hot dog bun, the Cheng Zai Bao, cause you know, could be like a hot dog from Fenway Park. We'll see. Pretty good. All right, here's the Dai Bao. Just means big bao, let's bust it open. Ooh, whoa, hell yes. That is what I'm looking for. You have chashu, you have like some cabbage, you have an egg, you have your pork meatball on the inside. Straight out of Toy San, this Dai Bao is just bringing the fire. Mmm, it's like a chop suey inside of a bao. Yo, I, uh, this was an interesting one. You gotta get this one. This was well worth it. 
All right, you know what? I couldn't go without trying the Chashu Bao. This is what they said they're famous for. The lady specifically said, we have a Yao Ming, AKA Yao Mingzi, AKA they got a name for this. Okay. The inside is looking more like the brown gravy one, not as red, not with the fake food coloring and stuff, so I respect that. Nice pork, lots of onion, less sweet, not a lot of that sugar glaze flavor. This is way more savory. This is a bolo bao, but it feels like there might be something on the inside. Let's see. Oh, hold up. Is that egg pudding? This is a sweet banger. This, this is the Lai Wang Bao. Bro, it's got the egg pudding inside. It almost tastes more like a Don Tot inside of a Bolo Bao. It's crazy. Definitely get it here at Hing Sing. All right, our next spot right behind me is Hong Kong Eatery. Now, they're really inspired by modern day Hong Kong. So they've made some adjustments and made some updates. And basically, they're like your traditional roast meat spot, except they're using technology on another level. Oh man, they already know. People trying to get some spicy duck toes to go. We got the gizzards. So I feel like this is kind of modern to be having the duck neck too. You guys, I was caught off guard. You know, the spot looks so old school from the outside, but they got this gigantic one right here. Of course, you know, we can read this new role, Hai Xin. Okay guys, we're at Hong Kong Eatery with Dixon. Actually, this is a friend of ours, cousin hello, hello. from New York City. He just introduced himself. Tell us about your spot because you guys have the lap yo, yes. but then you guys are modernizing with computer systems yes. and all this other stuff. Man, what, what's the desire to mix the two? Well, we're trying to make it like more like Hong Kong, like cafe, like, you know, uh, authentic Hong Kong. Not, well, only one in Boston right now is like busy. Uh, you can see, like, we just literally opened up the um, South Surf area uh -huh. and we had this like $4 container. All this is $4. Yeah, and it seems like people are really responding well to the modernization. Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. Um, a lot of like the uh, area mass people come here, especially just get takeout and barbecue. Like the duck is the most famous one in uh, Boston right now. Dixon, what's this, man? This is like a, so people special order this. They call this this uh, roasted baby pig. All right, you guys, we are checking out the Xiu Yuk here at uh, Hong Kong Eatery. I had no idea it was this modern on the inside. I'm excited to try out this roast duck. Okay, I can confirm. I can confirm that it's valid. This is just a roast pork. It's called Fo Yuk. Mm, they just had this hanging out in the back. That's, this is good. I'm not gonna lie. This might be better than a lot of Fo Yuk in New York City. <clears throat> a very Hong Kong item that they offer in their Samping Farm, which is the three treasure rice, is actually this beef brisket ao lam. You don't really see this as a um, common add-on choice, but they have so many one-ton dishes that use ao lam. <clears throat> Why not put it in the box? All right, so for $11, I got my Samping Fan. I got a couple different meats though. I got chashu right here, looking nice and glazed, thinly cut. I like how the pieces, they're not super thick, so you're getting a good ratio of the outside with the inside meat. And then I have the roast chicken right here. And then I actually got beef stomach. The big tripe. You know how there's different, they got different stomachs in there, so you know, this is the big one. All the meats that you get in other dishes, you can actually get them in your Samping Fan. Let's try the chashu. Mmm, bro, Hong Kong eatery. Perfect ratio, glazed skin, meat on the inside, just enough fat. Here I have the roast chicken, AKA the siu gai. This is different than siu gai, which is the soy sauce chicken, obviously that's more boiled in soy sauce. Um, this is actually roasted, as you can tell by the skin. Mmm, I'm sorry New York, but the deals are out in Boston and it might be because the rent is lower and they're not as squeezed for margin. You know, those are dynamics of, you know, the big city like New York, but this right here, Hong Kong Eatery has some of the best roast meats I've had in a while. They also got cold dishes on the side that you can buy, they're all $4. Now this is called the Thai style chicken feet. Obviously this is more of like your Hong Kong kind of updated fusion that's being Pan-Asian. If you're into chicken feet, that got great flavor. Nice kind of stretch and snap to it too. All right, you guys, let's compare the Boston Chinatown one ton to the New York Chinatowns. This is a little bit more of a modern thing, dipping into the chili oil. I know a lot of younger Cantonese people are doing this. Obviously the older generation uh, wouldn't have done it. This has way more white pepper. Boston Chinatown, very, very, very solid. I think New York got it on one ton though. As far as fast food deals in Chinatown, Ding Ho ranks number one. This is like New York's Wa Feng. Oh, they got Gale. Yeah, Gale. Okay. Oh, you tell me. For 550. 
I just got two types of chicken. The kale kai, which is a curry chicken, and this kung chong oh, kai, which is on. onion chicken. They told me they've been here for 40 years, guys. 40 years, it's 2020, that means 1980, yeah. And just so you know it's serious, they do have an A rating. Listen, I saw a college basketball player in there earlier getting this. This is curry chicken, Jali G, AKA Kale Kai. The Tao Fan definitely had a lot of flavor. You know, uh, I wouldn't say the most, but, but, but better than plain rice for your average person. That's a winner, guys. They debone the chicken and everything for you. Onion chicken. Dun, 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 dun. Listen, guys, Ding Ho is probably one of the cheapest, if not the cheapest, takeout spot in Boston's Chinatown. Um, the dishes are a great way to try some like lunch style dishes that you would never get for dinner. So uh, Ding Ho gets a ding, 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 ding. Corner Cafe Bakery, I just saw some doctors in there. I don't know if that means anything. I'm getting a mini pineapple moon cake and a mini green tea cake. Gotta try this lychee mousse. Wow, fancy fit. That looks like a, a Dragon Ball or some type of pearl or... You guys, I'm always excited when I discover new things in Chinatown that I have not had before. This is a pineapple moon cake. This is a green tea moon cake. And of course, this is a Cantonese salty lemon drink. Pineapple moon cake. This does taste like the Taiwanese pineapple cake, the feng ni su, but mixed with a moon cake. They do not fully taste like moon cake. The thing that's tying it all together is obviously the egg yolk in the middle. But you know me, I'm a supporter of progression, new things, new methods. You know I gotta wash it down with the salty lemon. Listen guys, if you like Pokari sweat, you're gonna like this. All right, what I have here is this lychee mousse. Look how pretty it looks, man. Dragon Ball on the same street. You got your cheap food. Oh my, I don't even know how to, oh shoot. All right, I lost my Don Tot, guys. That was risky. That is the best dessert I've had in Boston Chinatown. That is fire. Wow. All right, you guys, one of my favorite things is buying like small little trinkets and sandals on the street. Take a shirt y'all. Shikwai, okay, Shikwai, 10 bucks for the flocks. These ain't the Crocs, these are the flocks. What? Uh, she's, yeah, you can put them in battle mode. Okay, or you can put them in slipper mode. Slipper mode, battle mode. Slipper mode, battle mode. Slipper mode, battle mode. All right, you guys, in this video, we do not have time to get hot pot, but I did want to point out two chains from China. This Liu Yi Show hot pot right here, and right across the street, there's a Kwai Le Xiaoyang, which is Happy Lamb Hot Pot. These are hot pot chains from China, and they both are good. Two different styles, though. You cannot come to Boston's Chinatown without hitting Gourmet Dumpling House. The owner is from Qingdao, which is from Shandong, but they got Taiwanese food, Cantonese food. They even got Dongbei food. They got Di San Xian on the menu. Come check it out. People love it. All right, you guys, we're at Gourmet Dumpling House. You are looking at Qingdao Spicy Clams. Now, this looks about 70% like actually how Qingdao Spicy Clams look on Google. But, um, you know, similar enough. And then over here, you've got some Gurung Chong Bak Yu, which is like a, just a Cantonese white fish with the oil on top. Oh, that's good. Here we have one of my favorite dishes in the world, steamed fish with scallion and ginger with hot oil poured on top of it, guys. Um, what I think is cool between coastline cultures such as like a place like Shandong or like also like Guangdong, it's basically like... The coastline cultures, although culture does move from north to south and it does differ, it also goes east to west. So that means obviously people who are close to the water are going to eat a lot of seafood. So while I'm not saying that this is a northern dish, this is definitely a southern dish, I think northerners can like it too. Oh. Mm. I'm in my happy place. So our mom is a northern woman from Shandong, but she actually has a lot of Cantonese influence in her life. So. I don't know, I guess this, this kind of tastes like what my mom would make. Probably one of the most important sauces you need to know in Southern Chinese cooking is gurung chong, or in Mandarin, jiang chong. That is the uh, ginger scallion. Okay, so here we have the Shandong style dumplings, guys. I actually had to Google it just to make sure that these truly are the Shandong dumplings. And the things that make it similar to it is that one, it's large. Two, the skin is supposed to be very simple with just two ingredients, just flour and water. And also it's supposed to be very, very hearty on the inside. It's grilled, very crispy on the bottom. And even the top has kind of split open a little bit. They're okay with that. 
You see how that skin splits? And it's gonna let that sauce go in. Ooh. Lots of ginger in there, I like it. Mm. Skin is thick, but not too thick. Mm. You guys, in any city with a sizable mainland Chinese population, these are popping up everywhere. Moonflower House, Andrew, is designed to mimic KFC and McDonald's China because their formulations are so different, but they're basically designed to bring these to the US. This is uh, mimicking, I believe, the KFC chicken sandwich from China. You guys, these are popping up all around America, any place with a sizable Chinese population. Basically, these are your knockoffs of McDonald's China, McDonald's KFC, but coming to the US market. Guys, I gotta tell you this. This is the best one I've had yet. Comparing it to Flushing in the 626, this is absolutely the best Chinese imitation chicken sandwich I have had. This was designed to be the KFC drumstick. There is some of that slight New Orleans flavor that I'm not a big fan of, but honestly, like I said, in terms of imitating Chinese fast food chains, this is probably the best one. Grilled chicken rice burger inspired by most burger. Hard to eat, but this is excellent. Just showing you how Chinese they are, guys. They have the wasabi taco, the wasabi octopus bits. All in all, guys, I think that this really represents a side of Chinatown that is more similar to modern China in 2022. And I do think that a lot of Asian Americans or ABCs are missing out on it because we're more familiar with like the Ding Ho's and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love Ding Ho, but I do think that we should try some of the new concepts being directly ported over for the international community. Okay, a couple doors down from Hing Sing, we got a more modern Hong Kong style bakery because that was more old school, but let's check out what they got different. Definitely getting this pineapple shaped roll. I've never seen this exact bun before. Also, you can tell right off the bat that they more specialize in the fruit cakes. Okay, I like how they have individual slices here. They also got some of those club sandwiches. I might have to get one of those. All right, you guys, now we're at the Hong Kong style bakery. And uh, as you can see here, we've got the Kale Aoyopao. This is actually an Indian influence bao. Uh, when the British, you know, obviously took over Hong Kong, they also had India as a colony at that time. So, you know, you get the cross-cultural pollination with the curry bao. I've actually never seen this bolo cake before. This is a pineapple Swiss roll with some cream in the middle. $2.25, that's a winner. Ding, 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 ding. We're not at a Chinese wedding right now, but that does not mean that we can't have some fruit cake. Pineapple roll-shaped cake. Let's go. It's one of the best pastries you can get in Boston's Chinatown. It's fluffy, but it's got this hard, crispy, crunchy outer with the sugar on top. That little buttercream in the middle that's oozing out. Oh, oh this is sinful. Guys, for $2.25, this is way better than a lot of other cakes that you can get for three times the price. Definitely try this out. All right, you guys, this is the fried pork cutlet at Waku Waku here in Boston. It's steaming. It's still steaming. Uh. Tom Yum Ramen here at Waku Waku, guys. Look, you got slices of lime. You've got some cilantro. You've got the Tom Yum broth. It's sour, but it's not too sour. It definitely is its own invention. For me, Tom Yum Ramen works. You know why I know it works? It's because instant regular ramen works and instant mama packets from Thailand definitely work. So this is just an elevated version. Okay, here I have the kimchi ramen. Nice pile of kimchi sitting on top. Ramen underneath. Let me taste the broth. Let me see how this, what this is like. Mmm. That works. You know, the kimchi is a little bit sour. Adding that pungentness, a little bit of that dried fish, dried shrimp flavor. But overall, man, it's looking good. Let's get it. Let me get a nice bite together. What I like about this is that, you know, you still kind of have your creamy pork broth, your tonkatsu, but then you have the kimchi on top and it just really balances everything out because to be honest, sometimes tonkatsu ramen for me is a little too heavy and just a little too fatty, but the kimchi cuts through the fat, so it works perfectly. There's some big scorched Boston shishados. Mm. You know, they always trick you. They look hot. They're not spicy though. The classic gyoza, thin skin dumpling, deep fried. I do think the original version of this came from Fujian to Okinawa, then to Tokyo. 
I believe so. You let me know if I'm wrong in the comments down below, though. Mm. And when you want to get Liddy in Boston, this is mango sake nigori. Rice wine with mango added. Cheers to Boston. All right, guys, we finally secured the Bozai Fan, the clay pot rice. As you can see here, they already ripped it out for us. And I believe this one right here is the eel. So you guys, I've never seen actually like clay pot rice to go without the clay pot. So this is pretty cool. Eel clay pot rice from Boston's Chinatown. Honestly, they ripped out all the rice for you. So it's even like better in a way. This is the easiest to eat clay pot rice I've ever had in my entire life. Now it doesn't look like much, but I'll tell you this, if you judge by the lines, people were loving that bow tie fizzy. All right, with me, I have a mystery bow tie fine because I don't know what you ordered, David, but I got the soy sauce. Ooh, I have the chicken lap yolk and lap churn. Woo, this is one of my favorite. Thank you, David. Uh, here they give you this special soy sauce. It has a little bit of onions in here, so I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of that. What I like about the bow tie fond to go is that you still actually get all the crispy rice. Look at that. And again, they do the work for you, so you don't even have to scrape it off. This could be the best bow tie fond on the East Coast. I don't know, because this is the only dedicated clay pot spot I've really seen. There's one in New York, but it's, it's not as traditional. I gotta give that a four out of five. Something that I noticed about Boston Chinatown is that there are a ton of chains from New York City, whether we're talking about Manhattan or Queens here in Boston, just like Tiazi. If you guys have ever been to China, or Asia in general and been a college student and an exchange student, you will know that there are a lot of stationary stores for girls around the colleges just like this. Of course, the corgi with the big corgi butt. This one doesn't have a big butt though. Huan Ying Guangling from Taiwan to New York to Boston. Mm. Here, let me show you guys what's in this. Let me just bust this open. You guys, there are actually a ton of whole oats in there honey so it's almost like a oatmeal boba that is an oatmeal honey boba guys all right everybody i'm here at Havana sushi this is the crazy salmon roll it's salmon on the inside salmon on the outside avocado this was 13 dollars. this is a classic affordable cheap eat in boston's chinatown quality is not bad the salmon is nice i mean it's going to be all farm raised at this point but still delicious this is a seared salmon right here. So that seared salmon one reminds me exactly of something I used to eat at Sushi Land back when I was growing up. Obviously, the, the prices have gotten higher over the years. Very solid. You guys, we are in the land of salmon, Boston, so let's see how it is. Enjoyable. Yeah, boy, yeah, David literally no, is ordering zero, everything zero, right zero, now. Zero, zero. He's trying to bargain with her and be like, okay, can I put this and that together half and half? And she's probably just like, man, bro, you doing too much right now. You can tell that this is a really good Gaidanzai grill, David, by how old and heavy it looks. Ooh, well seasoned. I have never seen an egg waffle this loaded. You heard of loaded fries, loaded mashed potatoes. You have never heard of a loaded Gaidanzai. Oh, she's topping it off. Yeah. She's finishing the job. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, you guys, I have secured the raisin salted egg yolk, cheddar cheese, and chocolate egg waffle. I figured there was gonna be a lot of sweet, salty, savory, you know, contrast right here. Honestly, guys, I'm tasting cheddar cheese, the salted egg yolk, the raisins, and the chocolate all at the same time. It ain't half bad. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Okay, I'm here at Dumpling King. Let's see what I'm gonna get. I'm thinking about some, uh, you know, pork and leek dumplings. All right, you guys, we are in Boston's Chinatown at a food court. Um, these are the guotias fried all over. Um, a little bit more of like, I wanna say like a village style, you know, it's not just, you know, steamed and fried on the bottom. Uh, two different dipping sauces. Let's go, Dumpling King. I was actually really impressed. These were really well fried over. I definitely think for the Americanized crowd, having it almost fully deep fried is gonna be very delicious. It's a little bit different. It almost feels like a thicker gyoza. 
nice and fragrant. You know, Boston Chinatown does kind of remind me a little bit of like a mixture of Flushing and Old Chinatown. With things like this, this is not like the new style to make dumplings or I guess the more traditional style of making dumplings, but this is a tasty way to make dumplings. So it's about halfway through our Boston Chinatown tour and you know, I've come to a few realizations. Number one, this Chinatown is primarily Cantonese and specifically Toisanese. So there's not a great deal of Fujianese or Southeast Asian influence. Number two, it's super walkable, dense, and also very clean. Number three, there's also not a sense that people are rushed here. You know, Boston is not the metropolis like New York or even SF is. So while it doesn't have as many of the fun bars, lounges, and KTVs, from my perspective, it does feel super family friendly and it's defined by its small eateries. Also notable, it's 2 a.m. late night options are great. All right, so back to the food. All right, everybody, we're here at Ogawa Cafe. This is a 70-year-old Japanese coffee brand from Kyoto, Japan. This is their first American location in Boston. So they're doing things very differently. This is a iced coffee jelly malt, and they actually have coffee jellies inside. Look, let me mix that up. Yo, that tastes like a Japanese coffee candy. All right, so here we have the rose matcha latte. Beautifully done. I think their latte art is A1, especially with the two-tone and the little rose petals on top. I can taste the rose on top after you drink the matcha. And then here we have this avocado salmon sandwich, but it's actually like two slices of avocado sandwiching um, salmon locks. So let me just try this. Beautifully constructed. Look at this. Oh my God, it's like a sandwich. This is the coolest coffee shop in Boston. Another trend you see in Boston's Chinatown are like Chinese owned uh, Japanese izakayas, but executed quite well. I heard the Tora Ramens, one of them, they have some unique items on the menu like a kuro karage, which is a black garlic fried chicken. Let's check it out. All right, you guys, we're at Tora Ramen. We're looking at some lesser known items. This is a cheesy chashu don. So don is just a bowl of some sort. This is chashu with cheese that's been seared on top. This is a goma um, tofu and goma is like crushed up seeds that have created this like nutty vibe. This is pork jowl right here. If you guys like Korean barbecue, you guys might be familiar with this cut. And of course you got the kuro karage. The kuro is the black garlic. Karage is Japanese style fried chicken, specifically at izakaya version. Protected the moisture inside the chicken. It acted like a mini capsule, you know, like mini microwave, self-contained, as you could see by the steam and the juices. And of course for karage, they're using chicken thigh, so you know, shout out to Tora. As you can see, the chopsticks here have the hyper grip on them right here. This is almost like the traction pattern on a Kyrie 3 or something really aggressive. Boom. So go ahead. Cheesy chashu don. Oh my goodness, guys. I love this because it's a little bit of a modernized take on something hyper classic. I think that Chashu just needed a little bit of cheese to bring it into 2022. You know, it's really hot right now. I think the Koreans made it big. Typically, Japanese chashu is not as sweet and like red glazed as Cantonese style is. So I think that the cheese was a welcome addition. It kicked it up a notch, blended well, paired well. You guys are looking at the pork chow. This is one of the favorite cuts at Korean barbecue when you go to like a multi-cut spot. Iron sort of like burnt flavor. I know I didn't make it sound that appealing, but I know that you like it. I like it. <laughs> it's there. I was so impressed with Tora Ramen. We had to check out the original Tora. Like we said, this is Chinese owned Japanese food, but I have to say they do quite a good reproduction. Is it exactly the same way a Japanese person would do it? No, but it's quite good. All right, you guys, this is Tora, quite possibly the best Chinese owned sushi bar that I've ever been to. <clears throat> this is Uni Ikura, it was $40, but uh, Boston is right by the ocean. You get a lot of cold water here, cold Atlantic oceans, cold lobsters, cold unis, very fatty, let's go. Guys, the uni's fresh, the Ikura is fresh. Um, they put bumping Takayan, which is like a Japanese J-pop R&B guy in the background. What's not to love? We got everything Ube at Bao Bao Bakery. This is a old school Chinatown bakery that is kind of bringing itself into the future. 
using, of course, the Filipino ube, which has been very Pan-Asian in 2022. And I think that this is going to be a trend that I'd like to see a lot of old school spots adopt. You can still keep the traditional flavors. They had low paw bangs, you know, the Auntie Weiss pastries, but you got to bring it into something modern with the matcha and the ubes and the yuzus. It's good. I would say the ube flavor was so subtle. It was almost something a little bit more like a taro, but still enjoyable. This is the ube Swiss roll. Typically, you're used to seeing a lighter purple color and the taro flavor. This is a ube cookie. Um, I don't think this is a traditional Cantonese bakery item, but hey, like we said, guys, gotta bring it into, you know, modern mainstream. This is a matcha green tea with red bean azuki cream puff. I really think the future of most Chinatowns in America is to incorporate Pan-Asian flavors. Obviously, ube from Southeast Asia, matcha from Japan. Uh, I just think that that's the future, and I don't think that it's wrong. I think it's where things are headed, and uh, yeah, I think a lot of Chinatowns are going to become like Asia towns, but it still will maintain some portion of that old school vibe. All right, guys, we're inside of the Quarter Mall in downtown Boston, and we have found the one Chinese spot. It's Xi'an Ro, Jiamu. Boston's known for a lot of things. I did not know that they love the Xi'an Roja more that much. All right, guys, out of the random corner mall in downtown Boston, which is actually really close to Chinatown, they had a Xi'an Roja more, but they spelled it like Xi'an Roga more. Anyways, guys, this is actually part. It's a subsidiary of an actual Xi'an chain that serves Roja more, aka the Chinese hamburger. That's why it feels actually very legit. It's like layered and it's got the little spiral on top. Everybody does roja mo a little bit different, but this one's packed with onions. It was super random to see an authentic Xi'an roja mo chain inside of that mall. But surprisingly enough, actually all those food stalls were actually ran by Chinese people. Everything from the Bourbon Street to Wong's Chinese to the Sarku to the Charlie's Philly cheesesteak. Yo, this one actually is a lot better than I thought. It's really not bad, guys. Fruit stands in Chinatown, a classic. Yo, David, what are we gonna get? Uh, what's, what's, what's looking go good? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, go Boston Chinatown, $2 for dried donut plums. He told me I gotta wash them. Okay, we're gonna get some bun mees here. One, six, three. Here I have the grilled chicken bun mi from 163. Let's take a look at it. It's quite airy. It's not too heavy. The bread's kind of fluffy. I'd say this bun mi was pretty solid. I see a lot of people order a lot of other lunch food there. So maybe, you know, their rice dishes are even maybe better or more popular. But yeah, solid 3.5 out of 5. Another famous bakery in Boston's Chinatown, Eldo Cake House. Let's see what we get. Eldo. Oh, you go, you go, uh, Cheng Zai Bao. Or you go, like, Lap Cheng Bao. Okay, 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 not your face, just the yeah. food, just the chow mein. That's the chow mein, okay? Oh, wow, hold on, hold on. Hold on, chow mein. Wow, wow, wow. All right, you guys, we're at Eldo Bakery, world famous, at least Boston famous, historical. They sold out of Don Tot, but we did get all of this for $10. I'm talking about stuff that you eat. You know, when you're 60, 70, 80 years old, you've got the chow mein, you've got the uh, zhong, which is a zhongzi, you've got this lap cheng bao, and of course you've got the Boston classic bolo crust Swiss roll. Zhongzi, zhongzi, we love the zhongzi. David, you're a big zhongzi fan. I am. This is kind of like <clears throat> part of your old man taste buds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have the taste buds of an 80 year old fob. David, you are eating like a 60 year old kind of like construction worker right now. Yeah, I'm a known. In the morning, this is the morning meal. Salted egg yolk, you got some peanuts, you got some pork, yeah. you got the lap churn, okay, the sausage. Is there any chicken in there? Ooh, if there was a piece of chicken, that would really set it off, a fatty chicken. Once again, we have encountered the pineapple Swiss roll with the crust on top. Guys, I recommend the New York Chinatown get this from the Boston Chinatown, because this is something that is popping out here. They love this. Let's try this one, let's see it, compared to the last one we had. It's got the little jelly inside. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna unravel part of it. Mm. No, the other one had cream. Oh, the other one had like a butter cream. This one got the jelly. Wow. 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 Listen guys, I know Boston has a lot of colleges. There's a lot of smart people. And let me tell you something, some genius, came up with this idea to put the bolo crust on top of a Swiss roll and then put cream or jam on the inside. Listen, other Chinatowns out there, you need to get on this item. 
This is a five out of five. This is fire everywhere I go. Here we got the white flour steamed little um, sausage bun, but except instead of a hot dog, of course, you got the uh, lap churn, which is the Chinese sausage, essentially Chinese hot dog. Let's pull this open, okay. Very fluffy, whole thick. All right, let's see. Hold all bread. One of the most famous spots in Boston's Chinatown is Jade Garden, guys. This is open until 3 a.m. It's packed for lunch, it's packed for dinner, and of course you get that late night drunk crowd. Oh my goodness, but I tell you this, the food looks good. These lunch specials were cheap. This amount of salt and pepper pork chops was like less than $12. I think it was $11.50. This was like 11 flat, this curry beef. Too hot. It was just too hot, too fresh, but it was worth it. Come on guys, you can get this at 3 a.m. for $12. Jade Garden cannot be beaten. Here at Jade Garden, between the price and the quality and the time of day you can get this at, I'm gonna go ahead and give this the rare 10 out of 10. The Jiu Ying Jiu Pai. And this is a classic late night Chinatown dish. And what I love about Boston's Chinatown is it still really much encompasses what you thought a Chinatown was like 12 years ago. You know, I have to admit, I love New York's Chinatown, but the late night choices are sparse now, you know, maybe due to COVID, maybe due to crime, whatever it is. Boston's Chinatown still got it going on at 2, 3 a.m. Okay guys, we're outside of Jaho, which is right on the outskirts of Chinatown. It's really, really interesting. They have a lot of Asian inspired drinks on the menu. This is a Vietnamese coffee espresso martini. This does have alcohol content. And uh, this is actually a Sakura with uh, Sakura rose cherry blossom petals, as well as white chocolate. So let's check it out. And probably one of the most interesting parts about Jaho is not that it just has Asian inspired coffee, but that it's owned by non-Asian people. All right, you guys, this is the Cafe Suda Espresso Martini. Um, I've had, you know, alcoholic Cafe Suda before. It didn't taste that good. But this one's not bad. Listen, guys, the alcohol is bringing you down. The caffeine from the coffee is bringing you up. What a combo. Going to game one in Boston as a Nets fan. Is this hostile territory? Okay, the fans are crazy. Back to New York. Overall, Boston has a very enjoyable and manageable Chinatown, and I've also seen it change even within a year. The amount of international students at Boston's over 100 colleges will mean that there's more bigger hot pot places and dessert chains from the motherland. And I think it's great that this is being added to Chinatown to join the community and all the old school Canto staples. This is not an aspect that should be overlooked, especially if you say you like Chinese food. So anyways, hope you found this video helpful and insightful and let me know what you think in the comments down below. Hit that like button, click subscribe, and until next time, we out. Peace.